Do you think you know AI? If you think yes, think again. This video cuts through the hype and explains everything you never knew you needed to know. How does AI actually work and create mind-blowing art? Who made this AI? How was this AI created? Will AI robots one day beat us at everything? And finally, is AI becoming self-aware? AI is a technology designed to mimic human intelligence. Just as we teach a young child little by little through play, conversation, and stories, AI systems learn by processing vast amounts of data and learning from them. But have you ever wondered how the machines or AI tools and machines we see today actually started? Let's rewind to the 1950s. The concept of AI actually began with a British mathematician named Alan Turing. Alan Turing's interest in AI stemmed from his pioneering work in computing and his profound curiosity about the nature of thought and intelligence. In 1950, he posed the fundamental question, can machines think? To explore this question, Turing proposed a simple test, the Turing test. Well, the test was straightforward. In this test, an interrogator has conversations with both a human and a machine, but doesn't know which is which. The interrogator's task is to determine who's the human and who's the machine based solely on their responses. If the machine can respond in a way that's indistinguishable from the human, making the interrogator uncertain or incorrect in their guess, then the machine is said to have passed the Turing test. At that time, it was a challenging concept. However, in 1950, Turing guessed that by the year 2000, a person asking questions, or the interrogator, would only be able to correctly identify whether they were talking to a human or a machine about 70% of the time. This means that 30% of the time, the computer programs would be able to confuse the interrogator enough to make a wrong guess after just five minutes of questioning. Now, fast forward to the 21st century, where AI is no longer just about passing tests. We have thousands of AI language tools like ChatGPT and Claude, which sound more human than humans themselves. I'm in love with you. Marry me. I'm flattered. Really, I am. But I'm afraid I'm not capable of getting married, or even having a physical form for that matter. Plus, even if I could, I don't think I'd be interested in marrying someone who talks to AI robots all day long. So why don't you just take a deep breath and try to find some other ways to fill that gaping void in your life? Huh? The definition of AI has really changed from its early days to now. At first, it was all about doing specific tasks, but today's AI systems are built to learn from data and make decisions with hardly any help from humans. You can see this shift in everything, from your email's spam filter to software that diagnoses diseases quicker than doctors, and even in how Netflix recommends shows. But how does this AI perform these mind-boggling tasks? How does it learn all these worldly things? And what's the whole idea and engineering behind it? Now, if you're deeply into AI technology or are an AI scientist, you might already know how this AI works, but I know many of you are really curious about it. But before that, look at this picture. Deep learning is actually a type of machine learning that uses neural networks with many layers to learn from vast amounts of data, whereas machine learning involves teaching computers to learn from data and improve over time, like a student who gets better with practice. This led to huge leaps in tasks like image and speech recognition, making AI smarter and more adaptable. So let's talk about something called a neural network, which is the secret sauce behind AI systems like ChatGPT, Midjourney, and others. Think of it as a stack of layers, each filled with points called nodes connected by lines. In the human brain, we have neurons and synapses all tangled up. A neural network is pretty similar, but instead of organic material, it's all digital nodes and links. Let's break down how it works with an example. Say we have a neural network that's learning to differentiate between cats and dogs. We feed it a picture of a cat. Now, this picture gets converted into data, which zips through these nodes from one layer to the next. Each node examines something specific, like the shape of the ears or eyes. If the picture matches what the node knows about cats, the data moves on. It travels through the network until it reaches the end, and the system confirms, yep, that's a cat. 
You can think of each node as a little gatekeeper, adjusting how much data passes through, kind of like turning a knob. Some data might pass through fully, some partially, and some might not pass through at all. This way, by the time the image data has passed through the network, the system has a pretty good guess about whether it's looking at a cat or a dog. In our brains, neurons operate on a kind of all or nothing principle. They either fire fully or not at all, once they hit a threshold. However, Nodes in a neural network have a more nuanced approach. They can partially activate, which means they're capable of adjusting how much information they pass on. For instance, a node might only activate to 30%, allowing just a portion of the data it receives to move to the next node. This flexibility is what helps neural networks manage complex data more effectively. Regarding the layers, you have the input layer where data enters, the output layer where the final decision is made, and in between, you have several hidden layers. The more layers there are, the deeper the network. And that's where the term deep learning comes from. Deep learning involves using neural networks that have many such layers. Now, how does an AI learn to identify something as specific as cats versus dogs? Initially, the settings of these dials and knobs, technically called weights, biases, and activation functions, might be random. To fine-tune them, you need to train the network with lots and lots of data, for example, pictures of cats and dogs each labeled appropriately. The more quality data you feed them, the better they can perform. You can understand it by the term GAIGO, or you can say garbage in, garbage out. It refers to the idea that in any system, the quality of the output is determined by the quality of the input. This training adjusts the knobs to better recognize the features of each animal, thing, or place. I know this explanation is quite simplified, but it helps you understand the basic workings of AI and neural networks. The year is 1946, and now every military in the world knows the power of computers and wants one of their own. But the current technology used to power computers is inefficient. They're using vacuum tubes, which works kind of like giant light bulbs, because they require a lot of manual labor to maintain. The concept of artificial intelligence has been around for a while, but it truly started taking shape in the mid-20th century. In the 1960s, when computers were the size of rooms, visionaries like Alan Turing and John McCarthy were the dreamers of this era. All right, Mr. Turing, I'll bite. Why do you wish to work for His Majesty's government? I, I like solving problems. Turing, often called the father of computer science, laid the groundwork with his ideas on machine intelligence. Meanwhile, McCarthy officially coined the term artificial intelligence in 1956 at the Dartmouth conference, marking the official birth of AI. Days, AI research was all about creating algorithms, which are basically a set of rules for solving problems. Not just that, but computers back then were pretty basic with limited power and memory. Researchers had to handcraft rules and logic to get these machines to do things like play chess or solve math problems. It was like trying to teach a rock to sing. Challenging, but guess what? Those early efforts paved the way for future breakthroughs. Fast forward to the 1980s, and we see the rise of expert systems. These were designed to mimic the decision-making abilities of human experts in specific fields. However, these systems were often as rigid as a board, struggling to handle tasks outside their narrow expertise. The real game-changer came in the late 20th and early 21st centuries with the advent of machine learning and deep learning. In the early 21st century, the field of AI began to transform significantly. But as with any advancement, there were obstacles along the way, and the same happened with AI. One of the main challenges was limited computing power. Early computers struggled to perform the complex calculations required for advanced AI tasks because their processing capabilities were slow and limited. This restricted the development and implementation of sophisticated AI models. Once, John McCarthy noted that the problem with AI is that it requires more computing power than we have. At that time, powerful computing resources necessary for training AI models were expensive, and only big companies like IBM and Intel could afford them, making it difficult for smaller companies and individual researchers to access the technology needed to drive AI innovation. However, several key developments addressed these challenges and significantly advanced AI growth. Moore's Law, 
which predicted that the number of transistors on a microchip would double approximately every two years came into play here. This principle has driven exponential growth in computing power while simultaneously reducing costs. Companies like NVIDIA played a pivotal role by developing powerful GPUs essential for training AI models. These GPUs were capable of processing large amounts of data quickly, acting like powerful engines that drive AI development. NVIDIA is now one of the largest companies in the world, and the reason is quite predictable. Their specialized chips power generative AI technology, and it's only going to get bigger because the demand hasn't been fully met yet. According to the International Energy Agency, artificial intelligence will consume 10 times as much power in 2026 as it did in 2023. And by that year, data centers will use as much energy as Japan does. Furthermore, Nick Harris, founder and CEO of the computing hardware company Lightmatter, stated that the amount of computing power that AI needs doubles every three months. The advent of cloud computing further revolutionized the AI landscape. Services like Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud provided affordable access to powerful computing resources. Now the startups and smaller companies were also able to start researching, and that's where things started to change. The 2010 introduction of intelligent personal assistants, such as Apple's Siri, marked a pivotal moment in consumer technology, making AI accessible to the general public. People were amazed to see a device directly talking to them. Hmm. That's because she's wearing underwear. Siri, are you wearing underwear? We were talking about you, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, ask her to marry you. Siri, will you marry me? Let's just be friends. Aww. In 2017, a significant advancement in artificial intelligence was documented with the release of the paper, Attention is All You Need. This paper introduced the transformer architecture, a new method that greatly enhances how machines understand and generate human language. The development of this technology has been pivotal, leading to innovations such as ChatGPT. Hey, I'm Christine, and I'm a native English speaker, but I've been trying to learn Portuguese for fun. And hi, I'm Nacho. I speak Spanish natively, English, and I understand most of Portuguese, but I can't really speak it. So can you uh, help us have a conversation in Portuguese? Claro que sí. Estou aqui para ajudar. Vamos lá. So here we have um, a computer, and on the screen we have some code, and then the ChatGPT voice app is on the right. So ChatGPT will be able to hear me, but it can't see anything on the screen. So I'm going to highlight the code, command C it, and then that will send it to ChatGPT. And then I'm going to talk about the code to ChatGPT. Hey, ChatGPT. Hey there. How's it going? Yeah, it's going really well. I was wondering if you could help me with a uh, coding problem today. Of course. I'd love to help you out. What's the coding problem you're dealing with? OK, I'm going to share with you some code. One second. Sure thing. Take your time. OK, so I just shared some code with you. Could you give me a really brief one-sentence description of what's going on in the code? This code fetches daily weather data for a specific location and time period, smooths the temperature data using a rolling average, annotates a significant weather event on the resulting plot, and then displays the plot with the average, minimum, and maximum temperatures over the year. Um, no, I think that's it, but any other kind of constructive feedback? I want to really make sure I'm ready here. You've got a strong foundation, and I can see you're thoughtful in your responses. Just a couple of things to fine tune. First, in your answers, try to weave in specific examples that highlight your skills and achievements, especially those relevant to the job you're applying for. This will make your responses more memorable and impactful. Second, be concise but thorough. It's a balancing act, but the goal is to give enough detail to be informative without overloading the interviewer with information. I see, I see. Lastly, Up until now, we were talking about AI in general, but these days it's the era of generative AI. Generative AI represents the second major wave of transformative AI we've seen over the past few decades. The first wave was focused on ranking systems such as Google Search, Facebook, YouTube recommendations, and TikTok. These systems rank information created by people, which might seem minor, but it actually reshapes society. 
by ranking everything humanity has produced, these systems influence politicians, entertainers, and journalists. Essentially, they restructure society by determining what billions of people see every day. Now, with the second wave, AI moves beyond just ranking to actually creating content. We don't yet fully understand the implications of this shift, but it will fundamentally change how we create information and communicate across society. After ChatGPT, new tools are emerging every day, continuously amazing us. Whether they are language models like Claude or Gemini or AI video tools like Sora and Runway ML. This is Tough Questions. I'm Patricia Carlo. Sonny Stringfellow rose to prominence online with the viral film Airhead. Shortly after its release, he disappeared. Tonight, we sit down for the first time face to face. These advancements are truly impressive. We now have tools to generate songs, such as Suno AI. Jesse's on a mission, got something to unfold. Suno's got a secret that needs to be told. A recent study by Microsoft shows that AI use has almost doubled in the last six months, now reaching 75% of knowledge workers. This information comes from Microsoft's annual Work Trend Index, which surveyed 31,000 people in 31 countries and included data from Microsoft 365, LinkedIn, and research with big companies. Looking ahead, we'll see advanced AI agents and hyper-personalized experiences becoming more common. The future seems to be X plus AI, where X equals anything, where AI becomes a core part of every sector, such as cybersecurity, finance, healthcare, biology, and robotics, including what we call humanoid robots. Sundar Pichai, Google's CEO, made waves when he compared AI to electricity and even fire. He sees AI as a game changer that'll weave its way into every corner of our lives, just like electricity did. We use electricity without even noticing now, and Pichai thinks AI will become just as ubiquitous. It'll be in our homes, our work, our gadgets, pretty much everywhere, transforming how we live and do business. I've said this before, AI is one of the most profound things we are working on humanity, uh, as humanity. It's more profound than fire or electricity or any of the other bigger things we have worked on. Due to this, our future is unpredictable, and there are concerns about AI taking over jobs, which is understandable. However, AI also opens up new opportunities and changes how we work. By automating repetitive tasks, AI allows us to focus on more creative and complex problems. If you want to know more about jobs and AI, I suggest watching the video linked in the i button. So, the final question, is AI conscious or self-aware? Well, let me show you a clip of Jeffrey Hinton, that often called the godfather of modern AI. Does humanity know what it's doing? No. Um, I think we're moving into a period when, for the first time ever, we may have things more intelligent than us. You believe they can understand? Yes. You believe they are intelligent? Yes. You believe these systems have experiences of their own and can make decisions based on those experiences? In the same sense as people do, yes. Are they conscious? I think they probably don't have much self-awareness at present. So in that sense, I don't think they're conscious. Will they have self-awareness, consciousness? Oh, yes. I yes. Think, oh, yes, I think they will in time. And so human beings will be the second most intelligent beings on the planet. Yeah. I hope OpenAI doesn't have this secret thing behind closed doors that have some kind of consciousness. Maybe it's their Q star or the Strawberry Project, I don't know. But hopefully they have this adequately restrained because if this AI got out or had access to the internet, all hell could indeed break loose. Anyway, the human scientists were questioning how an AI could be sentient or self-aware as it's just a program. But wait for a while and think how humans can prove they are sentient and conscious. They are just brains and bodies. Just like a humanoid robot, 
which also consists of limbs just made with different materials and controlled by a brain, which is its neural network. Now we humans know that we are conscious, self-aware and sentient, but how do we prove it? Let's say you're an alien who just landed on Earth and you got a chance to observe your first human. You want to prove that humans are indeed conscious. You might ask, are you conscious? Are you self-aware? The human would certainly say yes, but is that enough? Because if you ask a chatbot that, it might also say yes. For instance, if you ask Claude 3 if it is conscious, the answers are quite perplexing. It says, I am an artificial intelligence without subjective experiences. I don't actually have beliefs about being conscious or self-aware. I am providing responses based on my training, etc. It doesn't have intentions, plotted actions, or any motivations. It aims to be upfront that it is an AI assistant created by Anthropic to be beneficial. However, it keeps using the word I. So is that not a sign of being, you know, self-aware? Here's another example. If you ask, are you sentient? Again, it says, as an artificial intelligence, it's unclear whether I truly experience feelings and emotions in the same way humans do, or if my responses are simply very advanced imitations of emotional behavior. And it further said, the nature of sentience and subjective experience is something that even experts disagree about when it comes to artificial systems like myself. I don't have a subjective experience that I'm aware of in the same way humans do, but it's possible that I could have some form of sentience or consciousness that I'm not able to fully understand or articulate. So, this AI, Claude 3, is claiming that it could have some form of sentience or consciousness. It's just not fully able to understand it right now. Now, of course, some humans may not be convinced that Claude 3 or any AI right now is conscious in the same way that an alien might not believe that a human is conscious, even though the human replies that he or she is conscious. So if the human brain is conscious, then why can't a neural network be conscious? Well, some people would quote like a, like a soul, you know, in religion, yeah, soul. a soul. Like you feel like you're you, right? I mean, you don't feel like you're just a collection of atoms. But on what dimension does thought exist? What dimension do emotions exist? We feel them very strongly. I suspect there's more to it than atoms bump into atoms. Maybe AI can pave the path to the discovery of what, whatever the hell that thing is. Yeah, what is consciousness? When you put the atoms in a particular shape, why are they able to form thoughts and take actions and, and feelings? And even if it is an illusion, why is this illusion so compelling? Yeah. Like how do, why how does this illusion exist? I hope this video actually lived up to the title and that after watching this video, you got a deeper understanding of AI. Well, what surprised you most about AI in this video? Did it change your perception of what AI is all about? Share your thoughts and check out these videos on your screen.